Associate Professor at the Eastern Kentucky University, and he's very well known for his extensive isotope tracer studies of the fish approach synthesis reaction, both at EKU, and previously when he was uh, spending several years in Bert Davison School uh, at the Center for Applied Energy Research. Um, the title of this presentation is Deuterium Tracer Studies, Affiliate uh, Mechanism, and Formation of Branched Hydrocarbons Using the fish approach Synthesis. Please help me welcome uh, Professor Xi. Thank you very much. Thank you uh, thanks to the organizer and all the daddies for many years. Okay, today I'm talking about the Deuterium Tracer Study, and uh, some I did in Dr. Davis group and uh, some at the EKU. And, uh, talk, and uh, then I then talk about uh, the mechanism for uh, cobalt catalyzer uh, theotrop reaction. And uh, first, I will talk about some uh, deuterium uh, separation on the GC and the GCMS, and then talk about uh, what I, I did and we did at the ETR in 1990 and uh, 2000, and then talk about the RQM. Right? Okay, the story begins on the separation of isotope molecules on the GC. So that is in 1990, uh, when I was a postdoc, I was assigned to study mechanism of uh, 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 reaction of a very simple molecule to butanol. <coughs> we study the mechanism. We use the deuterium and, and the unbutyl compound and, uh, to study the competition of the well, I thought that this would, this would be easy. Okay, dehydration gives you three um, product and it will be three peak, and then it will come out in less than five minutes on the TC. We expect some very little uh, either, and it's just about one with uh, one peak. But uh, to our surprise, that this is so-called a small peak, a wine peak, we've got a five. If very small mind, we don't know what it is. It always come out of five peaks, and in, 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 in things like that. And uh, then we finally, and uh, at that time, we don't have GCMS, so we have to collect a sample to run in the Pepper Research Center. Okay, and uh, finally we find there each one. There is a... Uh, the raw isomer can be separate. That's not a surprise. One surprise thing is that the deuterium compound comes first. Okay, all of them. And the undeuterium one comes later. Now, and then we, f we, we, we find out from which one, uh, which one is which. Okay, so and then we, we find something. I indeed check the chemical extract. You know at that time there is no uh, internet. Uh, we have a check uh, everyone. We didn't find the reference uh, in that part. I write a paper and I, I write a sentence such as uh, to the best of knowledge. It is the first. Okay. I talked to uh, Dr. Davis and I said, wait a moment. Wait, when, when you write this sentence, you have to make sure. And uh, he picked up the phone, called uh, his friend at the University of Tennessee. And uh, it is to our surprise that uh, he found this kind of phenomena many years ago. So it's not new. You know, at that time, uh, there is no internet. And uh, also, I was young at that time. There's no great hair at that time. <laughs> so, and, uh, but I. Uh, uh, with the encouragement of uh, Professor Van Hook, we indeed did some something like that. And uh, actually, the five peak is not a five; it is supposed to be ten, because it's 
because there is an inertia number for each one, this is a, uh, e, uh, either. And uh, we mainly today then we connect uh, two different uh, uh, columns together, and total is 120 meter long, and we uh, separate nine of ten. Okay. And uh, this work was published in, uh, we published a separate paper in the uh, Journal of Chromatography uh, in this area. So this is, uh, we call it the uh, inverse unstoppable effect on GC column. Now, and uh, uh, Shupeko Neil uh, read that paper and asked us to write uh, uh, application notes. We write this, and in return, they give us uh, several uh, columns for free. Uh, we need to uh, uh, publish some paper based on this method because we know which will come out and uh, for the either formation and uh, dehydration of two uh, tubules now at the same time. Now this part is easy. The difficult part how to quantitatively analyze isotopic isomer. Just the one deuterium, uh, just the one isotope uh, different. For example, we have a mixture of deuterium of one arcane. It could be C8, D16, or D15, D14, all of this. How to quantify each isotopic isomer? Now, at the same time, we, have, we do have a new uh, GCMS. So if you for this one peak, if just uh, in the on the left, you will find that the measure is uh, uh, D16, okay? And uh, that is the, that uh, due to the compound come, come to first. If we uh, make a measurement on the right, and then we will give you a hydrogen containing compound. And then if in the middle, well, the ratio is totally different. If you make conclusion based on each one of them, and certainly you are going to get the wrong conclusion, the wrong answer. So what we should do is that we measure all of this. So this is for that peak, you have H4, H3, H2, and H, and also H0. So, and if you use the molecular ion to analyze all of this, give you correct uh, analysis of this mixture. But then this uh, result is not uh, published, and uh, we indeed uh, tried to publish this, but uh, the referee said, uh, well, that's a kind of a routine work, but uh, we, we kept this for ourselves. <laughs> now, since we know this, we want to, we want to uh, do some uh, Research in the real heterotrophic area. And you know, in 1980, starting from 1970 to 1980 and 2000, there is a challenge to uh, ASF equation. So, according to ASF equation, if you have a plot, you support the plate, but uh, almost no proof get uh, this kind of distribution. Instead, and then you get things like this. Okay. That means that there is a positive or negative deviation from a SF equation. How to explain this kind of thing? Now, you find that in literature, it's not only that. There is a, a positive and negative deviation from a SF equation. Also, there is a, um, the alpha value change with the bad. Fat rest in time, or PO ratio. And uh, most importantly, we did a carbon 14 treatment study, a uh, carbon 14 study, and uh, there is a negative deviation for a constant activity. For example, if the compound is an uh, uh, initiator, the molar activity is supposed to be constant. But uh, instead, yes, it's constant, just uh, like Amy said, 
lead from C2 to C8 or C7. That's a constant. But after that, that is the decrease the width per molecular weight increase. So how do we explain this? A lot of uh, scientists make a contribution in this area. For example, and uh, uh, Professor Sanfield in MIT proposed that two different uh, catalysts get side uh, here. And then uh, Professor Iglesias proposed that diffusion in imitation model. And also, there's uh, some other theories explain this. But if you put all of these together, none of them can explain all of this. So, this means something we still don't understand. Now, and then, at that time, I, we run a uh, carbon-14 uh, tracer for something. And uh, I uh, was uh, responsible for, I mean, cleaning up all of this uh, carbon-14 stuff. Okay, and uh, report because of the, the uh, regulation. Now, for each one, the first day when we run this, the carbon-14 address can cover about 70%. So where is the other almost 30% of carbon-14? So therefore, I have to pick up the next day. And the next day, I got about 20%, and even six days later, we still got a lot significant of uh, carbon-14 material. Now, what does this mean? This means that there is a radioactive compound accumulate in the reactor. So, we cannot uh, get, we think we run the coming for him, we stop, that we collect all the uh, sample, but actually there are significant amounts still in the reactor. Now, for coming for him, we cannot uh, determine each one, but uh, we can do this, use uh, uh, the theorem because we can use the GCMS to analyze each one. So what we did is uh, we run the uh, CO hydrogen first, and then switch the two uh, CO and the deuterium. Okay, if there is no accumulation, and then the product is supposed to be, all of them, a deuterium compound. Okay, and then we, indeed that is the case for octane. If you run octane, just a small amount of uh, uh, so, yeah. uh, just a small amount of uh, hydrogen containing compound, and uh, mainly it's a deuterium one. Okay, that's okay, but uh, for C10, dating, okay, the accumulated product almost equal to the new one. If you have a six, uh, uh, C60, and uh, mainly what we collected is mainly it's a hydrogen containing column. It's an accumulated one. Okay. Now, we did uh, all of this uh, up to C18. If you uh, plot the percent of uh, accumulation, you see for C18, that's uh, 98% of it. That is, uh, the first day you collected the entity, actually, it's an uh, uh, accumulated product. You didn't get any, I mean, just a small amount of fresh produced IP product. So therefore, we propose, I mean, that uh, uh, the sample you collected, including two parts, one is a fresh, freshly produced IP product, and then is uh, another part is the uh, accumulated product. And then we can use the, uh, the equation each one. If we know uh, that for a particular reactor, the fraction of uh, uh, accumulation. Now, this uh, result means that ASF equations here work. So we don't need to modify ASF equation. We don't need to, and we use this equation to explain all of these uh, uh, chain length related phenomena. Okay. Now, for example, how to solve this problem? 
you can solve this problem by you need uh, the alpha value for a, a reaction. And then you can just uh, make a switch. We did that for a uh, catalyst. For example, from C, from C2 to C8, there, there is a, uh, we plot there is an uh, alpha value. And uh, for the, from C, uh, C9 to C16, there is another alpha value. And these two parallel to each other. So therefore, using this one can uh, uh, solve a little bit about this problem. Now, and uh, also there's another ch uh, challenge to the, uh, to the AS equation, including uh, parallel to orphan ratio. And uh, Professor Iglesia explained this using transformation. He frankly explained this. And uh, what he explained is the result this. Okay. But uh, this one is not a true PO ratio of heterotrophic uh, reaction. The true one of the switch experiment is got in the red line. It's almost a constant. Yes, there is an increase, but it's just a little bit. Therefore, you don't need any theory to explain this. It's already there. Okay. That's, uh, that's, uh, that's uh, uh, also based on the uh, uh, experiment. And uh, we, uh, we published this in the today. Now, there is another challenge to the ASF equation. That is uh, from uh, Professor Imoto. He did uh, in supercritical condition, and uh, to run this, he finds that there are a lot of amount of uh, heavy product. He called uh, this the anti ASF distribution. We did a similar experiment, not the exact same, and uh, using carbon 14 tracer study. And uh, we find that, uh, yes, there's a, a incorporation, but the incorporation obey the SF equation. So there's a no anti-SF equation. OK, so after this, and then I, we, uh, and I left TER, and we continue to study in this area with the two uh, techniques I have. One is the deuterated, how to analyze the nuclear compound. Another one, we use the, the uh, H2D2 switching method. What are we? Enrichment 
is a function of uh, topic number. Now, for that one, how to explain it? So, what I will explain it is, is this. First, you have to have uh, explain the inverse of the way inside. So, in order to in, uh, explain this, and there, uh, there must have, in some, some step, there is a uh, bound order change or hybridization change the structure from SP2 to SP3 or from SP to SP2. If you have this kind of change, then I could explain the inverse of the effect. Now, uh, based on this, and then we propose the uh, arterial mechanism. Arterial mechanism shows this right at the bottom, and the chain, a growing chain, is a uh, is the arterial, and the monomer is a uh, uh, CH species. And if you use this, and then you can uh, explain uh, what happens for the new term. Uh, for the, the uh, inverse of the effect. Now, the inverse of the effect could be from other sources, such as uh, alpha gothic uh, or beta gothic uh, interaction. But uh, that will give you the same result. Now, when we propose this menu, we made, made the following assumption that if the FTS obeys, that's our assumption. That means the IP products are controlled and are kinetic controlled. So that we can use this equation to, uh, to indicate overall in arcuity. But if it's very arcuity, it can give you protein. When protein is rich out of stock, there's two possibilities. One is give you one protein which will be grow if you see four. But uh, if you if you give you two probability, well that will give you branched compound. That is the two metal uh, branched uh, yeah, branched uh, hydrocarbons and so on. So that's uh, for uh, homocanalized reaction and then uh, I thank Dr. Davis and uh, his uh, work and uh, his uh, support for many years and also the members in this uh, uh, group. And uh, so for the EKU, for the financial support, and uh, several of my students. Okay. Uh, thank all of you. Thank you very much. And we have um, maybe time for a couple of short, short questions. Yes. Uh, yeah. What type of column you use to separate 50-50 when you do the 50-50 nitrogen between? What type of column you use to separate isotopomers? Uh, isotomer. Uh, we use uh, SPB5. SPB5? Uh, oh, yeah, SPB5. Is it a column to separate all the isotopomers? Yeah, and actually, according to, uh, according to Professor Bantu, any kind of a column can have uh, can separate, but uh, the separation is very kind of color. What uh, he did in 1970, he used just a glass tube to separate some different compounds. Yeah. yeah. But in the case of IFT, you get a broad distribution. So a broad distribution, yes. Uh, so oh, yeah. So that, that, that each isotopomers, I mean, the difficulty in separation of these. Separation, yeah. For, for that one, we, we use a 60 meter uh, ISPD co uh, column. And then we have to rely on uh, GCMS, GCMS, and that kind of thing. Oh, okay. For complete separation, uh, the, the, the difference, the difference at least is three. So you, for example, you have an octane D0, and then you can have a, a significant separation that will be this uh, octane D3. You have to, if I cannot separate R, uh, D0 and D1, uh, but uh, you can see on the uh, on the uh, GCMS uh, there's a peak and uh, there's a shoulder, but I cannot completely separate. So you showed in one of the slides like uh, 
for using the 120 uh, meters column that you can separate the octane isotopomers of octanes. Uh, so is that column can be used to separate the HD uh, isotopomers in the you mean 20 columns? 20, 20 meter length column you said that you got yeah, a totally yeah. separated phase. Yeah, probably. So that column can be used for separating the NFT isotopomers? Uh, no, probably not. <laughs> probably <laughs> not. So, I do try the 30 meter, 30 meter length. Uh, but if you, you, if you have a, have a mass uh, detector, then you can you, you can see it actually. Well, start here and then over there. Yeah. Thank you for a very nice presentation. Okay. And I was uh, thinking about the magnetism you showed. Yeah. And since yesterday I've been presenting about the stable C2, C3 species on the surface. Uh -huh. And some of the species that you include in your magnetism are not particularly stable. Uh, I was wondering if you can make it match or have a similar mechanism but using more stable species. Uh, uh, yeah, that is, that is, that is, yeah. Or, or maybe, uh, what is, do you have any, any information about stability of the... Uh, yeah, the uh, actually, that's a very good question. Actually, I, uh, I, don't, uh, I don't know which uh, species is the more, is the more stable. Uh, but I just think that it has to go, to, go together. I think uh, that our theory probably is uh, uh, we can consider that as an intermediate. So probably we could have find some way to I mean to uh, to determine our theory, the green chain, and uh, that would that could be a, a step of this. But uh, not the most at all. draw the diagram at least on the close spectrum. The green is not. So the alkylene dye is more stable. Dye? Alkylene dye. Ah, alkylene dye. CR. Okay. Like the CH, but then R. Okay. Probably they go through this. But that is stable species, not necessarily produced in verse actually. Uh, probably they go through our period here, and then go through some step of species, and then go to another coming coming more formation. Probably that's uh, uh, Professor Weinstein. They did uh, some calculation using uh, reaction, and then probably that that is what it should. Yeah, we can talk. Okay. Yeah, I think would be quite if you. Yeah, sure. Right? And one more question. Okay. <coughs> so with the, with the oil field, the ratio of okay. carbon number dependence there, yeah? Yeah. it turns out that the oil field, that's a secondary reaction involved to a high extent with the cobalt catalyst. Yeah? Yeah. And so this explains much how the uh, oil and paraffin ratio changes. It's a secondary reaction. They are no longer the primary products. Yeah. It's maybe different with the iron catalysts. <coughs> For instance, the Iglesia picture, they are yeah. only primary oil and fins. He yeah? doesn't have in it so much the reabsorption of oil and on other sides. Yeah? Yeah. So there's some confusion in the literature. Yeah? Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, that's that, that what we, right now we are conducting the uh, inverse size of the effect. And, uh, in rich making iron catalyzed reaction. We, we will find out what you, you, you said. For the paraffin orphan ratio, when there's something uh, very, very strange, and uh, actually the uh, two orphan increase, okay, while orphan decrease. So clearly there is a secondary reaction. Yeah. Well, thank you very much for the presentation. For the